three, two, one, go. Alright, this is Defenders 54, continuing the story with the Nuclear Russians. It is also Kevin Griffin's final issue as artist on the series. The last two issues of his run suggest why... It seems like he could not complete them in time. And I think in this case, it might be partly because maybe the scripts themselves were taking too long to finish. Because in Kevin Griffin's defence, he did manage to do like 10 issues in a row. And one of them was extra length. His departure from Defenders and these last two of his issues being shorter, I didn't think has ever been discussed. Everyone assumes it was a deadline thing, but I didn't think anyone has revealed what was going on behind the scenes here. The story is that some of the Defenders have gone to Russia to stop nuclear experiments which are poisoning sea world and Kevin Griffin he has gold member helping him out this issue again and like the last issue it gels well the two artists work together seamlessly and it is not clear which artist is doing what. I did find out one of the few things I could find out about the artwork in this story is that Kevin Griffin would draw random pages of it. There wasn't a clear breakdown of which artist was doing what. I think that makes a fact the two very different artists somehow managed to rhyme with each other all the more impressive. I also learned that there were several pages for the last issue that were drawn by Kevin Griffin which were unused. So I really didn't know quite what was the case with these two issues being short. Or why three artists couldn't do a full story in time. Here are present and Russia girl being bathed in nuclear energy. Nuclear, it is pronounced nuclear. I actually picked this issue out to do today for a reason. And that reason was because I am ganning through one of my depressive episodes I will not dwell on. But this issue was one that I had a very, very clear and obvious thing to talk about. And that was... This was the end of my first real big batch of Defenders issues I got. The Kevin Griffin run. Issues 42 through to 54 here. But it turns out I have plenty to talk about in this story as is. Dollar Bill. I want to talk about Dollar Bill. Because he has shown up a few times, but I didn't think I have quite gotten into why I think Dollar Bill is great as a supporting character in this book. Defenders was a series very much defined by Steve Gerbel. 
he gave this book a personality. He gave it life, really. And a lot of people misunderstand Steve Gerbel's influence on this title. And they think that he just made it wacky and silly, which is not the case. Steve Gerbel did some tremendously serious stories in there. There was a lot of innovative stuff. There was flippancy, sure. But there was never a sense of the book becoming an absolute parody. Of all the subsequent Defenders writers, Anthony Davis, the writer of this, he was, without a doubt, the one who most got what Steve Gerbel did. And he carried the torch. Dollar Bill is a great example of this. He is a comic relief character. He is a bit annoying. He is a bit stupid. But he never breaks the tone or makes a book a total farce. Dollar Bill works. By the way, my depression was not why I took the weekend off. I took it off to work on music in me shed. We have Velcro's ex-husband John up here. And I didn't think they set up guns anyway. At least not in this series. He is trying to find S-H-I-E-L-D headquarters. Because he wants to join... He wants to become a S-H-I-E-L-D agent. And the next time we see him, which isn't until the 90s in No Man series, by then he has joined S-H-I-E-L-D. I guess you could see this little scene as writing him out of the book. But it's plainly written as if it is set up for some it. One problem I have is that we seem to achieve very little over the course of these last two issues. Which is obviously because they are truncated into off-issue stories. And we end both this and last issue... Sort of the same way with the bad guy revealed. I have not read the rest of this story after this. So I'm really looking forward to that. Let us over here. Interesting thing is we have a letter from Peter Gilbert who ends up writing this series. Unfortunately, his run is diabolically bad and it killed the book and it has never managed to survive long after that. So, after this, we have another backup story, this issue. And this one I like, in a way. It stars Samuel L. Jackson and it builds on... Or it resolves the Maxwell L. Jackson character from the Ankh Scorpio story. If you didn't remember or you didn't watch them videos. There was a reprogrammed robot copy of Samuel L. Jackson called Maxwell L. Jackson. We briefly saw at the end of that story the real Samuel L. Jackson meet with the evil Maxwell L. Jackson. But this here, it shows us what happened with Maxwell L. Jackson next. He, uh, he is attempting to kill... The real Samuel L. Jackson. Because 
He wants to replace him with himself. He wants to take over his life. It's not a great story. The execution is too... Serial giveaway comic. Or too Ostess Fruit Pies advert. But I like that it is spinning out of the series. A bit more than the standalone Rachel McAdams story last issue. Speaking of, the writer of that was a woman called Naomi Bassner. And that is a real name. And I bring it up because that was her only published work for Marvel. She got recruited from a high school to work as an intern at Marvel. And Jimothy Shooter treat her like utter shit. And he belittled her and all her ideas. She left the industry. And that story she wrote wasn't great. I didn't even know if it was good. But it's sad that she seemed to be recruited because she was a young woman that an ignorant bigot like Jimothy Shooter could ridicule and exploit to exert his power. Yes, Jimothy Shooter was an ignorant bigot. He was a homophobic bully and he was a power mad despot. But by God, did he make the trains run on time? Defenders 54 there. There's not much of an issue to review, to be honest. It feels like the other half of the issue before it. There is some good artwork. There's a good overall plot. And we have a decent villain. I will seven thumbs up this issue. 